you, Joe. All right, guys, welcome to the first podcast of Beyond the Pixel. It is a podcast about gaming, gaming, and yeah, gaming. So I have with me Dismount and Joe. You just introducing Dismount? I just said and Joe. Pay the pay <laughs> attention, I Joe. Said and Joe. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just throw that out there. <laughs> I was literally saying, and Joe. Joe, introduce yourself. Joe, the one who is apparently forgotten. <laughs> the forgotten yeah, child. This is our, he is our middle child that we do not care about. <laughs> and feelings that hurt. In today's, to, <laughs> the feels, the feels, in today's the topic. Feels are so hurt right now. It's okay, Joe. We'll we'll send you a we'll send you a card. Send me an e card. I want we're... like a Zelda e card. We'll... No, we'll send you a, a basket of uh, exotic exotic butters. Whatever those are, is that like someone from South Park? You're gonna send me a bunch of. No, no, no. That's a that's a that's a Five Nights at Freddy's reference. Come on, Joe. Okay. Get, with the, get with the game references here, bro. All those indie pop games I don't fucking listen to or play. <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, anyway, <laughs> on to today's topic, gentlemen. Remakes. We're seeing them everywhere, left and right. Old games being revitalized through the power of flipping cult culture. We know that Metroid 2 is getting released uh, in September 15th by Nintendo on the 3DS, the like least popular flipping unknown Metroid game, in my personal opinion. And we're seeing Shadow of Colossus being released in 2018, like a staple of the PS2 era. So what are your guys' thoughts on the remake culture and how it's revitalizing old forgotten games? I mean, Would I you feel really? like... Oh, go ahead. Oh, oh. I, feel like, uh, I feel like it's just another way for publishers to make more money. I mean, honestly, like, come up with something new. Come up with something fresh, something that, that people haven't played before not remaking of old games i mean yeah it's cool it's nostalgia whatever but it it just seems like a money grab to me i think they're cool they're just overpriced yeah and that's another thing like if you're gonna remake a game like cool make it like 15 bucks me a launch for 20 bucks okay but I mean, a lot of these games were on older older platforms, though, so the code isn't really applicable. You can't take Game Boy code and make it 3DS code. You essentially have to recode the entire thing. But to your point, saying that you know they're just there for the money grab, you know, why won't they remake like for Metroid Two? Like, why not remake something good like the first Metroid, Super Metroid? Super Metroid hasn't gotten. A remake that was originally on the Super Nintendo. Yeah. Um, Nintendo, we're talking about. And they don't re They don't. Oh, they that, do what they want. Oh, that's that's true. Because I would I would I would actually love to see a Donkey Kong sixty four <laughs> being remade for like the Nintendo Switch awesome. or three DS. I, I would I would buy like, that. That would be amazing. I would buy a remake of Donkey Kong Country. See, I don't mind like games like Metroid and Shadow of Colossus because they're being completely remade. But back like in the PS like three era and early PS four, like games again like an HD like upscale to me was that was like a huge just money grab. I'm like, you've got God of War three for the PS three, and been like, oh look at this, we made it God of War four, and now it's 1080p instead of 720p. Yeah, graphics, but uh, yeah. But see, the, with some of those, though, too, like some of the publishers did, right, where it was like on that verge of the PS3, PS4 switch over, like uh, Call of Duty Ghost, uh, when I bought it, um, if you put it in your PS4, like within six months of the PS4 coming out, um, you could download a, basically a patch for the PS4 where you could play the PS3 game in your PS4 so you didn't have to buy another copy. It was just a patch that they did. See, I, didn't, I don't mind stuff like I that, know, I... but... A lot of these games that got like an HD upscale, yeah. like for example, when I watched a, a Let's Play, it was they were playing Sly Cooper and it got an HD upscale, and it was worse than the original <laughs> game because it had a lot of glitches in it. I think it even the game even crashed completely, which well, is 
really unheard of on a Cooper? console for a game to completely was that just uh, yeah for the uh, ps3 the entire that. trilogy was is, remade. Is it an HD upscale? Is it supposed to be like an HD upscale? Yeah, HD. it was. It kind was kind during was, that kind HD kind of upscale with, era. Like Grand Theft Auto Four, or not Grand Theft Auto Four, right. Grand Theft Auto Five, where they had the one on PS3, and then like a year after PS4 came out, they had the PS4 version of it, and it was better detail, more stuff going on in it. Same thing with Battlefield. Which for, yeah. Which for that type of game, I I don't mind because if you're if you went ahead and bought it. You know, most likely everyone's now going to get it for that console because it's the newer console. Right. So, well, it's just like uh, StarCraft is a good example. I mean, StarCraft came out in what, 19. Uh, when did that come out? It was in the 90s. I don't know. I was probably like five in the yeah. 90s. And I was like, a now little... they've completely redone it. And I've watched gameplay of it and I've watched side by side comparisons of it. And it's like, yeah, it looks better, but it's not what I thought it was going to be. Like, it's not that much better. It basically went from being, like, 480 to 1080. It was like, I really can't... And then they... Yeah, not only do you have to have the original StarCraft, so if you don't have the original StarCraft, you have to rebuy it, and then you have to buy the $15, basically, patch for the game that upscales all the graphics. That's well, there. That's just uh, that's just Blizzard being greedy <laughs> well, as no, fudge. Now the robot they're Activision known for. Now it's like, oh, how can we squeeze more money out of this franchise? See, that's that's like also another thing with like these remasters is all these companies buying up these other companies, like the Crash Bandicoot Insane and Trilogy. You know, that was originally owned by Naughty Dog, and now Activision. Who you just think of Activision, you just think of Call of Duty. You know, remaking this game is is like is are they helping or are they kind of hurting in some regards because like a series like crash was a series that started off well and then it just ended with the ps2 era and now it's revitalized the ps4 era and there was a lot of great games in between the first crash game and the last crash game and you're kind of wondering well how long will it take for them to actually revitalize some of these older games to bring them to a now new generation of gamers um, without looking like a bunch of just, you know, money grabbers, you know, just like, I don't mind only the, the popular games getting remastered, but I mean, if you're going to revitalize like a series, I feel like you need to just like hit hard. Like you just start with the best games from that series and just remaster them. And then from there make new content, which is, a very slow process it seems like because yeah even though metroid like example i keep going back to metroid because that's what's fresh in my mind you know they're getting prime 4 but really the only good metroid prime game was the first prime game because then second and the third one's kind of flopped in comparison so how many like, some games, games like yeah we like the prime series but you know you don't want all of them being revitalized really start the new series off yet again like you're saying it's revitalizing the series but are they making a crash 4 are they making more sonic manias i mean they are obviously making another sonic i mean nintendo just throws that trash sonic like crazy but they did a god of war remaster it still took four years to get god of war 4 i mean are there any of these games actually producing well that's a new that's re- well god of war wasn't really dead like crash just died it didn't have like a definitive and like god of war did and then they just brought it back out of nowhere um what i'm saying is like a lot of these games had a series but the series kind of ended like on a mute point or didn't really end like metroid prime the like, series ended like on a kind of crappy note so you revitalize an older game to get people excited, and then you work and develop on a new content, which I'm fine with that as long as they bring out new right. content. So that's the thing. Like, don't don't remaster stuff if you're not going to make something new. Right. So, like, I know a series that I always want to see out there is Mega Man, but they always like they always bring back the classic series. Uh, Mega Man 1 through 10. And I know it just got like a Legacy Collection 2 on Xbox. And 
you know, I didn't grow up with the classic series. I grew up with like the X series. Like the my first Mega Man game was actually Mega Man X5 that I got for a Christmas gift on a PlayStation 1. So I would love to see the X series be revitalized and not the classic series so much because I just think the X series is superior in terms of just overall gameplay mechanics and story than the uh, classic series, which I mean, you can bring back the classic series, but you know, make it more playable because it faced the limitations of being on the NES which was a very limiting system. So if you're going to bring it back, make it more enjoyable and playable than the original NES, not just throw it on the, as a collection on the new console or PC, unless you're trying to just raise money to actually redo it. Cause then we see a bunch of knockoffs like mighty number no. nine, which flopped terribly. It was hyped so much, but it was it overall a just it was a big a flop. It was a lie. Yeah, that's, that's right. It was just, it was just one, one giant lie by the publishers That's... and it, that, that thing was on Kickstarter. So there's definitely a fan base for Mega Man. With it's just, developer. I feel like Mega Man was, well, I'll never support any, it was... any game like that. <laughs> Well, that's what Sonic Mania was. Sonic Mania was not done by Sonic Team. It was by a bunch of third-party developers. And Sonic Team is working on Sonic Forces. So if Sonic Mania does significantly better than Sonic Forces as developed by Sonic Team, well, Sega is obviously going to follow the money. That's what they've always done. So True. Mm. But the Sonic Mania versus the Sonic Forces debate will be that'll be held for a different podcast. <laughs> you ready for Sonic Forces? Because uh, I'm ready, but I don't think the internet is ready for Sonic <laughs> Forces. I don't think it's going to be a bad game, but you know we'll, we'll have we all have a whole completely different discussion about <laughs> Sonic Sonic Forces in the 3D Sonic <laughs> games in comparison <laughs> to the classic games. <laughs> So, what about uh, Shadow of the Colossus then? You think they should be making that? Oh, yeah, most definitely. That was, it was so well for the PS2. It was one of the best games for the PlayStation 2. So, seeing it completely remastered, not just the HD remake we saw for PS3, but a complete ground up remaster of that game, it looked absolutely amazing. I'm going to definitely buy it. But I'm not going to pre-order it because pre-ordering does not provide any benefits. I'm not waiting outside for that ish. <laughs> oh, have, they released a bunch of gameplay, haven't they? Haven't they? Have you played the first one? I think the bosses are going to be and the controls. I think the, the controls hopefully are going to be. I hope we don't have the same issue that we had with the um last guardian which were the controls were very archaic and felt like you were playing a ps2 game on a ps4 console so i feel like they're not going to have the same level of archaic controls i think the the controls might feel a little archaic because of the nature of the game and how it's meant to be played but i feel like the controls are going to be smooth i think this game is going to thrive very well because it's a complete remaster and i feel i feel like the team is going to do really well in that regard so what are your thoughts what are you guys thoughts i think on any Shop remaster Forces? game has difficult controls like crash bandicoot i'm sure the controls in shadow of the Colossus are going to be clunky they'll try and smooth them out but then it won't feel the same for the people who played the previous version and then everyone will get upset with it or they'll be like not smooth enough and then people say oh this feels like a ps2 game or a ps3 game and it should have released 10 years ago i think that's a huge issue with remastered they can, they can never seem to get the controls right to please everyone if you look up any review for a with, game it's always trashing the controls it crash bandicoot um the controls weren't bad they were they were very ps1 like well you really felt it in the first in the first game just because with these remastered games um like crash bandicoot one was built on playing on the d-pad so if you're going to remaster it 
it's still following that same philosophy because the game level design is still the same. Like when we remaster it, you're not changing the level design at all. You're just adding a bunch of features, making it HD upscale and HD remaster. And you're adding um, new level of coding to make the control smoother. But that's one thing that the uh, remastered games will face is that the level design will still be the same. So you still feel like the controls are a little bit more archaic. That's because the way when that game originally came out, that's how things were played. So you're going to be facing a level of difficulty when trying to play that game, especially when playing newer games such as Dark Souls and um, Darksiders and you know the new Sonic games. There's a million so remasters you probably just can't think of. Yeah. Well, there's obviously a million remasters because that's the culture right now is to remaster everything. Call of Duty, Modern Warfare remastered, Deadpool's been remastered, like a even, sleeper remaster that's on every console now. Even movies, like, like I feel like... Uh, it feels to me, this is my whole thing with the whole remaster, I feel like people have ran out of ideas, so they're just trying to... Right on the money at once. They're, they're they're trying to write on the coattails of these older games that were successful at one point in time, and you're always going to have that cult following. But for a lot of these games that are re- remastered and remade, but you're not bringing in new people. I don't I don't feel like everybody's always like, oh, we want to introduce this to a new generation of gamer. I don't really feel like it's doing that because I feel like everything now is about you know content gameplay and story well some of these older games you just can't content's not there the gameplay and the story and they won't understand why people used to like them no i I understand yeah yeah that's my thought on it The, the remaster culture only fails when it doesn't bring in new content so if metroid brings out metroid 2 and metroid prime 4 wasn't announced then nintendo's just looking like they're just going for a money grab they're not looking like they're revitalizing like an old series that people have forgotten about and want to bring to a new generation so you bring it to a new generation with the remaster but if you don't bring new content with that then now you're failing at your job and you're just looking for like a money right. grab so with Shadow of Colossus, I would like to see a new game like Shadow of Colossus. Um, and we kind of got that with Last Guardian, but Last Guardian was... It was a fun game to a certain point. Um, I could only play it in small bursts because after playing it for a while, I got annoyed trying to control the Trico. Whatever, I still haven't played it. little cat-dog bird thing. Uh, Joe still hasn't played it. He's probably just going to sell it back to GameStop. So... Uh, don't ever plan on buying that game. <laughs> so, like, if God of War were to like remaster like the first game completely, I feel like it would be fine because we got God of War four. Right. So, because you know, we'd have all these remasters. As certain, just get backwards compatibility around. Yeah. Well, they're not going to do that, Joe, because we're gonna we're gonna discuss another topic, you know, later. And that is the the uh, the console taking on the the phone the cell phone treatment having a new console out a small upgrade like every year. Um, so we'll have that as well as another uh, talking point. But I feel like that's all the time we have. Any last question? Any game series do you guys want to see completely remastered, brought back to life? Sorry, uh, he I'd say Donkey Kong Country. I'd play some. I used to play the shit out of that on Super Nintendo. So I think uh, if Donkey Kong Country, uh, if they redid those, I would definitely buy that. I actually just think so that's calm. on the 3DS. Just the so all we need is SoCom. SoCom would be great. That's, it. that's all. So Donkey means. Kong Country, SoCom, and of course, I would love to see the X series come back, and <laughs> I would love to see X. Especially X one through five, I would definitely want to see those um, come back on maybe the three DS or the Switch. So most likely the the three DS though. I feel like that's where a lot of the Super Nintendo games 
would really thrive at. And, you know, we'll have a lot more sure. talking points. This is only episode one. We still have a hundred more to go. So thank you guys for watching. I want to thank my co-hosts, Dismount and Joe. This was King Shaka from Team Jozu, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.